GitHub Copilot X was announced a little over a month ago with some exciting new features for developers. We're going to be able to have conversations with context in VS Code, personalized documentations tailored to our specific queries, automated PR descriptions, and Copilot in our command line. I've been on the wait list for every one of these features since they were announced and I've finally got access to GitHub Copilot for the command line. So in this video, we're gonna be checking it out and see how it can supercharge your work in the terminal. So with all that said, let's jump over and get it installed and get going. So yeah, I was invited to Copilot for command line technical preview. I got access a little over a week ago, but I couldn't access it because there's actually a campsite. So I couldn't really do a lot. <laughs> but yeah, um, now I can install it. Let's get it set up. And I'm keen to compare this to what I've used in the past, which is Shell GPT, which allowed me to use OpenAI within the terminal and the shell. Yeah, and just uh, see how it compares. So we're pointed to this... Um, npm package to install it. You basically get access to these three commands once it's installed, question, question, git question, and git question that allows us to be able to just basically ask a question directly in the terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Um, I first need to install GitHub because I do not have the command line for that. And I also want to mention that you do have a, need to have access to Copilot as well. So if you're not signed up for that, this isn't gonna work. And that's simple enough. It's literally just brew install. Let's go. Okay. Oh, that didn't actually take that long. Cool. Okay, so we got to get help with that as well. So we literally just need to run this command npm install g so that we can run it globally. Let's do that now. And then I think there is a couple of other extra commands. Yeah, so we need to set up these uh, convenience commands as well. Uh, in order to be able to use the shortcuts that we've got for the GitHub Copilot CLI. Otherwise, we have to write it like this every time. Let's just try something very basic. List files in this directory. Okay, so we need to run the GitHub Copilot auth command first. Handily, we need to go to a web browser and log in. Yeah, do that. So let's try that again. List all files in this directory. Hold on. Nice. So what we get here is we get the option. Uh, we can see what the command is, which is obviously ls, very basic one. We can revise this query or we can cancel. Let's revise the query. Let's say find all files in my downloads that are over 100 megabytes. Okay, let's run that command. So that's a handy one to this will execute the command in the shell. Let's have a look. Wants access to my downloads. Okay. And it tells me that most of my things are OBS and Diffusion B, which is not to be unexpected. Not to be not to be unexpected. Yeah, that's right. Um, let's try something else. Let's say run a docker and run a hello world docker container. Let's run it. Do we have docker running? No. Okay. I did this in the other, um, in my other tutorials where I did not have docker started. Common thing for me. Okay, needs an update, but it should be a fit. Okay, run this command. Sure. Okay, that's cool. It's pulling it. Hello from Docker. There we go. Cool. Okay. So you can see it handles like basic queries really nicely. Um, so if you're not familiar with bash or whatever, you can quickly get a bash command to understand um, how would I convert a bunch of images to a movie. So we get to sort with natural language. And the really nice thing for something like this, where it's coming back when a very fairly complex FMPEG command is that we get this explanation. So we can see 
the frame rate. You can see that we're talking about putting input files in. We're talking about the 26x264 codec that we're going to be using. That's a load of stuff that people possibly aren't going to know off the top of their head. And if they are, then they're probably doing that command every day and they don't need to call this anyway. Um, but yeah, that's really very handy. Um, let's try something else. So the, the other things that we get with the Copilot uh, CLI is that we can also make um, queries on Git commands and queries on uh, GitHub commands. So we get three commands. We get a question, question mark, question mark, Git, and question mark, uh, GH for the GitHub uh, command. So I've already got on my um, system my blog, um, so it's got all my posts from many um, from Ian Witten .co Um I'm going to ask it how who is the owner of this repo? Or is it Git question mark? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rather than question mark Git, Git question mark. Who's the owner of this repo? Let's have a look. So it explains what the command's going to do. Ask me to, if I want to run it. Yeah, go on. And so it's telling me the URL there. It's not necessarily the owner of the repo, I suppose. Um, let's try that again. Who is author? Okay, cool. Well, that's cool. That's given me a fairly complex query, list commits. Print out the author of each commit, sorts by the list of author names, and removes duplicates. So you can see there that it's only me that's committed it. So we do git log just to show. We've got tons of uh, commits going in there. Git question mark. How, how many commits in this repo? Fifty. Cool. So this is cool. I quite like the explanation um, compared to with something like Shell GPT, which we've used in parts. It's very different because that is actually a conversation. It's very much a chat GPT conversation. And um, the command is filtering down to basically the meat of what you want. Classic. Let's do a classic. How do I revert the last commit? What if I don't like my last blog post and I want to get rid of it? So git reverse, uh, reverse commit, specifies we want to reverse. Uh, I won't do that. Um, revert the last two commits. Cool. So yeah, head to specifies what we want to go to. The, specifies that we want to revert to the commit to before the current one. This is pretty cool. And it's nice that it kind of asks for this confirmation each time. Um, Shell GPT also has like this option of being able to just execute it um, straight off the bat. So finally, let's check out the GitHub command. So, so that would be GitHub question mark. So let's say, how do I create a new gist for instance okay let's run that command okay so it's basically complaining that there's nothing um been put in there so we could pass in a file i suppose uh, let's do it for the readme so create a new gist Actually, just revise the query, create a new gist from readme.md. Run this command. Yeah. Okay. So we also need to log in to GitHub. So let's try that. Authorize. Let's go. Okay, so let's try that again. Create a new gist. Close, oh man, create a new gist from my readme. 
let's run this command. Yeah, let's go. Okay, cool. Did it create it? This is the question. Ta -da. So it's created a rather not particularly helpful, but a gist from uh, my readme there. But it's the fact that we've not had to go away and look up this stuff, any of this stuff on Stack Overflow or whatever. Um, let's, as a final... Oh, wow, I've actually got changes in there. So I probably, uh, probably don't want to be mucking around in too much, but let's do... Okay, let's just create a new file. And let's ask create a new branch with Okay, well, and this is kind of a nice example, actually, that it's actually grouped a whole bunch of commands. It's not just one, it's three. So we've got git checkout new branch, we've got add new file and git commit it. So let's run that. Okay, cool, done. Then let's ask GitHub to create a new PR from this branch. Okay, cool. That's a command that I've never used before. So it's filling it in based on the commit message, which is kind of cool. Let's see if that works. Okay, that is not working for some bizarre reason. Let's... So we've added a new file. Let's... Push upstream, run it, branch. Run this command, go on, yeah. And that's interesting. So it's saying there, it's actually failed, which is an interesting turn of events. So it's saying origin branch, and it's actually just running this with the code in it um, rather than the branch that we want set. So my, let's say it's new branch and modify it. Okay, cool. GitHub. Create a PR from this branch. Okay, let's submit that as a draft. Okay, so I can't do a draft. Let's redo that command. Submit. Okay, let's have a look at that. And I can see in this browser that I've just had that crop up here. Let's compare, which is adding this new file, which has the test commands in it. So works much as you would expect, I guess. So yeah, hopefully uh, you can see how that's useful. Um, it's interesting that we had a failure there, that we had a problem and that we the commands it was entering weren't um, completely correct and that it had variable names in them etc so it's interesting to see that there's still bugs to be ironed out so hopefully they get all ironed out before um, before you get to uh, experience it for yourself go and have a look at my other video on shell gpt it's really interesting to see some of the differences here where shell gpt is a more conversational way of working with stuff in the terminal it allows you to have sessions and things like that um, and yeah, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, subscribe if you enjoyed it and give it a like and I'll speak to you in the next one. All right. Bye for now. Bye.